Well, Solomon Burke has had a remarkable career and he recently celebrated his 70th birthday. In the last decade, he certainly made a comeback of sorts. I won't say a a comeback in, in a sense that he never really went away. He was always... Working in the music industry, recording, releasing albums, Um, he gave up his job as a mortician and uh, concentrated on music back in the early 60s. And, of course, his work as a preacher. But in 2002, he teamed up with Joe Henry and released the Grammy Award-winning album, Don't Give Up On Me. And since then, he's worked with Don Woz and Buddy Miller. His latest album teams him with the great Willie Mitchell, who unfortunately passed away just earlier this year. I caught up with Solomon by phone the other week and we talk about the album and about Willie Mitchell's production. Hello Solomon, how are you? I'm fine and how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Whereabouts are you at the moment? At home? Um, Well, I'm on my way now. Well, thank you very much for making the time to talk to me about the latest album, Nothing's Impossible. I guess there's a bit of a tinge of sadness associated with this because of the great Willie Mitchell's passing in January. Yes, a very, very sad thought and very, very unexpected. I was lucky enough to meet him a couple of years ago, Solomon. I visited him at Royal Studios and what a... Well, you were there. You were there. So you know exactly what I mean when I say the mystery of this university of his own. It was his own kingdom there. It was. It was It was a very humble place, a little bit like Willie, wasn't it? Yes, very humble, very real, and very right to the point. You know, uh, you were in the studio. You were there. And wandering in off the street and talking to Willie and seeing it, it's hard to believe that such a place has produced such magnificent music over the years, proving that you don't need a high-tech, multi-million dollar studio to make great music. Well, you know, the studio's worth millions. Uh, It's the idea of the technique, the sound, the tone, the wood, the drapes, everything the way it was, the original way. It's like a great oven or a great kitchen. You know, you don't want to touch the stove and you want to keep the same pots. You want to keep everything just the way a mother has it, you know, because the taste is there and the soul came from the mixture out of that studio. So that little building, Royal Royal Studio, that Royal building there is actually very royal and very legendary. And very appropriate for a king to record oh, there too. Uh, well, uh, i tell you, I felt very comfortable and very at home and the whole family, uh, the whole family made me feel at home. You know, after 30 years I'd met Willie. It took 30 years for me to meet him, just to meet him. We had talked, we had laughed, we told jokes, we made promises about recording and writing together and doing all these things together. And there were so many times and occasions where we missed each other, or I came to Memphis and he was gone, or he was gone and I was in Memphis. You know, one of those things. And when we finally came together that morning at 11.15 in the morning, and I walked in that door, and as a surprise, and Boo said, you won't believe who's here. And he said, well, who is it? And I said, Willie Mitchell. And he said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Man, this, man, this, is, this is a joke. I must be dreaming. And we just went on. And when I speak of him, I pick up his spirit. I, I pick up his tone, you know, because it's so remarkable, incredible that he's no longer with us, you know, but he's going to forever be in my heart and my memory. Early in the morning, I'm thinking of you. If it's raining, if it's storming, or even if the skies are blue. Oh, I can't help myself. What a feeling. I don't want nobody else. It is surprising that you hadn't worked with him before, particularly when you hear this new album. His heart was saying to me, I've been waiting all these years to do this with you. He said to me, I'm not letting you out of this studio until you record here. And you've been waiting all these years to get here, and you ain't got here. I ain't letting you out of here. You ain't. Just take your big butt on. I ain't going to say what the rest of the word he said. But get on in there, and let's, we're going to record something. Boo, go home and get that record I got under my bed. Bring that record here. To all them other people couldn't, and a few other words he used before other people. He didn't want to sing it, couldn't sing it, whatever. And he brought the record back. He got on the phone. He called his musicians. And within an hour, they were all there, just like working on a fire station. I mean, just ready to go, ready to go. When he pulled out the song, You Needed Me, I was blown away. I was blown away. He 
wanted so much for this song to be done. He had played this song for other artists, and they couldn't do it, or didn't do it, didn't want to do it. And he played it for me one time. We went over it. The band went over it. They knew it. He said, I'm going to play the piano on it this time. And you go in that booth, we're going to cut it right now. I said, you? I said, but I don't know. He said, you don't need to know it. I'm going to give you the words. Hey, Candy, give him right the words out for me. My daughter said, we got the words it's already written, Dad. Went into the booth, cut it the first time. I said, man, I don't know. He said, yeah, you do it again. Just do it again. And I did it the second time, and he said, I said, I think I can do better. He said, no, you can't do no better. That's it. That's it, man. You come on out. We're going to write another song now. That was the beginning of an evening that lasts until 4 in the morning. And out of that evening came three songs you needed me. Dream, and I, I, I tell you, what a night. What a day. If you met him, then you know what I'm talking about. You know his magic was there. When you were in that vocal booth, Solomon, did you use Al Green's favorite microphone number nine, or did you use another one? one to use. That was the only one to use, number nine. You know, number nine. They even went and got my throne chair for me when I came back. So it was just incredible, man. I mean, uh, the story just goes on. It should have been a movie, you know. It should have been a movie. I cried a tear. You wiped it dry. I was confused Yes, you needed me You needed me You've worked with quite a number of producers over the last 10 years. Joe Henry, Don Woz, Buddy Miller, all, all special in their own way. What made Willie Mitchell such a special producer, such a great producer? It wasn't the producer. It was the friendship. It was the friendship and kinship that we had not kindled. It was the togetherness that we spoke about, thoughts, the evening, the thrills, the laughter, the memories, the joy from Otis Redding and all those guys, Sam and Dave. It was all of those things that we wanted to talk about, high records, when he wanted me to come with high records. And I said, no, 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 I'm going to stay where I'm at. You know, he said, you need to be over here, man. You know, before the Al Greens. You know, come on, this is an amazing time in our lives. Uh, and watch the children grow and the grandchildren and not meet this person. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine having that kind of friendship last at that length of a time? And then when you meet, it's like, it's your brother. It, it was just like seeing my, my brother. You, you must feel very lucky that you were able to establish that friendship in person with him before he passed away. Oh my God, I feel lucky and I feel sad because I realize all the time that I missed, it's, it's, it, it hurts. It hurts inside. 